beautiful Aries friends and welcome to your horoscope for June of 2020 where Aries this month is a busy month. This is a busy astrological month. We have got movements and they're significant movements. I mean, it's always busy up there in the cosmos, but this month is a busy month. We've got movements happening and they are going to shift you. We are in eclipse season and eclipses tend to work in pairs. So we've got definitely the next six months, the first half of a year getting ready to begin and begin to be brewing and culminating and creating the shifts and changes. And then in the next six months, we'll do a little bit of seeing everything that came to flourishing from it. So <clears throat> when I tell you that June is a busy month, please believe me. But let's jump in and talk about what that means for you because there's a lot that can still be done in this month. So it's not like it's a busy month. Be afraid. It's a busy month. Let's use these energies wisely, okay? Right at the beginning of the month, when we come in on the second, I want to make you aware. Mercury will take a retrograde this month, but it's going to begin its shadow period here on June 2nd, okay? So it's going to begin its retrograde shadow, and then it'll actually take that retrograde on the 18th in the energy of Cancer. We'll get to that in just a minute. Now, on the 5th of the month, we're going to have a full moon lunar eclipse at 15 degrees of Sagittarius. Now, the full moon says that something needs to be ended, acknowledged, or adjusted. So we create a shift. But with a lunar eclipse, what we're doing is we're creating a shift over six months, okay? In the energy of Sagittarius, what's happening here is that the state of your perception around ninth house things is going to take a very big shift, and it needs to be addressed here. Now, the ninth house is higher education, publishing, marketing, broadcasting, any way that you expand out in the world. It's a place of the bigger picture, not the smaller picture, right? But the big picture of what's going on. It's also a place of faith. So I can tell you, June, when I look at it and I look at the Aries timeline all the way until 2021, you're developing a new faith. But what that brings with it is this idea of Aries, what's guiding you? At this point in your life, what are your principles? What are your ideals that you are standing on that will make it so that you can have this big picture experience and so that you can expand out into the world? What you think and what you believe will actually drive your actions. So what are you thinking? What are you believing? And how is that driving you? Whether that's in higher education, your marketing, your publishing, you're putting out your YouTube channel, or just how you're doing life in your lane. This is a time over the next six months, you may be presented with some ideas that are like, maybe that idea doesn't work for us anymore. Or, oh, I can expand. How about this? I never thought of it this way. So it's very much so an energy of faith and perception that is available at this particular moon. And don't worry, there's going to be a lunar eclipse video where we will actually get into the astrology of this eclipse as well. So you won't miss anything. Okay. On the 18th, we've got Mercury ready to take this retrograde. Now it's going to begin its retrograde at 14 degrees of Cancer, and it's going to end its retrograde July 12th at five degrees of Cancer. Now this lights up your fourth house space, home, family, real estate, property. But the thing I'm really tapping into for you guys is this internal psychological foundation, your emotional security, where you feel grounded because this is the foundation you are standing on now, especially if you're past your Saturn return. This is the foundation that you create to stand on to create a solid home so that as you expand from that full moon lunar eclipse that's happened, you've got something solid down there. But also, home, family, real estate, property, things are going to be shifting and changing and needing your review because that's what we do during a retrograde is we review, revise, re-edit, um, reconcile. You know what I mean? We go repair the fourth house. Maybe your house needs some repairs. So you could be making repairs or changes or edits or um, adjustments in the area of your home or with your family. Now, sometimes what this can look like is maybe you do move. You could actually be making a move during a Mercury retrograde. You know, was that lease up? In this ninth house space, did you get offered... Um, an opportunity to live someplace else and study or, or did you just decide I want to go someplace else? We're in quarantine time so that seems kind of unlikely for some people but I still think that it is an awesome opportunity if it's available to you. But certainly you'll see during this retrograde that you're going to review home including the home that you live in here in these foundational places, okay? 
on the 20th, the sun enters into the energy of cancer, again, bringing light, heat, life, and vitality to your fourth house. So you are motivated to work on this particular area of your life. Now, I will tell you because the sun is here and it's shining bright and you're motivated, remember Mercury is still retrograde. So I wouldn't, if you can avoid it, sign any brand new contracts. Like if it just comes up, it's super brand new, I wouldn't do that. But if it's the case where it's like, yes, my lease is up and it's time for me to move, you were already in the process. So likely the signing of that lease will be good to go. Just make sure you check out that fine print because the sun will have you ready to move okay now this also means that we are in summer the summer solstice is upon us we're at a season change so this is absolutely brilliant it's new life i mean i don't know i felt like March and May had 97 days each. I don't know about you. So it's kind of nice to come into this shift of season change and be like, okay, we're moving on to what's next or just a kind of deep breath. So celebrate the summer solstice the best that you can. And if you are our friends who are not in the Northern Hemisphere, you will be celebrating um, fall. So this will be an interesting, no, you will be celebrating winter. My goodness, you will be in a different season down there as well. On the 21st, to welcome in this solstice energy, we're going to be having a new moon solar eclipse at zero degrees of cancer. At zero degrees, this is a critical point for us. This is tip bottom for you, Aries, of the fourth house. This tells us, this is the indicator that something is changing. This is new, fresh beginnings that are happening at this solar eclipse, and they are going to last and likely happen and move quite easily over this next six months. So you've got a fresh start, a fresh perspective coming into your fourth house area right here at this solar eclipse. Now, I will tell you, even though I get really excited about new beginnings at the new moon. I would tell you this solar eclipse, if you can wait to start these new things or actually put the action behind some of these new things for about a week, I feel like it's a little bit of a safer zone. At a critical degree like that, the energy is almost like, woo, enjoy it, get in the wave of it, but don't try to, don't try to push too hard into it. So if you can give yourself a couple days after this eclipse, I think that's going to be a little bit more useful for you. And of course, if your birthday is on eclipse day or give or take two or three days before or after, this is going to be a significant time for you. You are on a new life path here. You will absolutely be at a critical cycle shift for yourself. So if this is your birthday time, important things are on the agenda for you. On the 23rd, we've got retrograde energy happening. Neptune's going to move into retrograde. Now, this means we've got 60% of our planets in retrograde. It is at the maximum that we're going to see for a while until we get again to September. But this is a lot of retrograde. So we know that things are not flying forward, right? We're still in a slowed down energy. And it is very much so about a review of many different areas of our lives so that as we come out of the retrogrades in the second half of the year, we can see what's been adjusted and move it forward. Now, Neptune retrograde is going to be happening, of course, in the energy of Pisces. So lighting up your 12th house space. So here, here, when Neptune goes retrograde, um, it's almost like reality becomes a little distorted because it's so concrete, right? It's like, woof, right? We need this sense of play and imagination and kind of in between the worlds, even a little daydreaming. I think as humans, we need that. But as Neptune goes retrograde, it's like, boom, this is reality. So in your 12th house, things that are hidden, things that are unresolved, um, research that needs to be done, your prayer and meditation life, your actual spiritual practice. This is the energy, I think, in a retrograde where Neptune says, we got to go back through this 12th house because I'm going to help you have a spiritual awakening. I'm going to help you be free, right? I'm going to help you transform. And even if it's not that you have to clean out six months of your life in your childhood, if that's what you're working on, that's fine. But if that's not what you're working on, Neptune is going to help you go back and kind of dissolve what doesn't need to stay in this hidden closet anymore. It's an absolutely beautiful energy, but you will definitely face it over the next five months, okay? On the 25th, we see Venus coming out of retrograde. She's stationing direct at five degrees of Gemini in your third house. So we are 
whew, again, welcomed to a little bit of a deep breath. This lights up your third house space of communications, messages, 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 um, decision making, things with siblings, things with neighbors, contracts, negotiations. Um, with Venus out of retrograde, you have likely had conversations in your relationship. You've likely, likely had conversations around your money or your values, the things that you value. It's been beautiful, right? We've had two eclipses this month under a Venus retrograde, which has, which has brought the question of what do I value? Does this idea, does this property, does this thing have value to me? Now that Venus is coming out of retrograde, you will see how she almost like stuck a stamp and applied those new values to all of the adjustments that are being made. And now she's going to be ready to walk forward. Venus in Gemini is a beautiful mind. It is beautiful conversation. It's beautiful decision making that is relatively harmonious. So Intellectual ideas, intellectual hobbies, conversations can go and they can flow a lot better at this particular point in the month. On the 28th, we've got Mars coming home into your ruling sign. You are comfortable. Mars is comfortable. Everybody's having a hug. It's like, welcome home, Mars. So Mars in Aries lights up your first house. You are ready to go. You are ready to be in motion. You are ready to be in action. You are feeling full. You are feeling powerful. Now, what this can also do for you, though, Aries... When Mars comes home, you want to Aries, right? Like you want to move, you want to take action. And I love it. Take the actions that you need to take, but make sure they align with the values that you just re-looked at during this Venus retrograde. Make sure they are actions that allow you freedom and allow you progress forward, right? And sometimes you got to clean up the past high retrogrades in order to have that progress forward. But also, I think that Mars and Aries here gives you this energy that says, I want to, I want to be out in the world. I want to be seen this way. I want to move this way. Um, it also is an energy that allows you to tap in and really trust your instincts and your intuition. Now, remember that Neptune is retrograde back here in your 12th house. So you've got Mars here, ready to take you forward, ready to take some kind of action. But Neptune's like, let's clean this out. Let me give you, let's let's have a spiritual awakening back here. So maybe what you're even doing is being in action to clean out and to complete some things so that they are no longer in the way. But either way, Aries, you want to be seen, you want to be in motion with this energy, and I say do it. All right, as we end the month, we come to June 30th and we've got um, a Jupiter-Pluto conjunction. This is not the first one. This is actually the second in the series of what we're going to see. But this time, as opposed to when we saw it before in April and Jupiter and Pluto were both direct, now Jupiter and Pluto are both retrograde. This is happening in the energy of Capricorn, so 10th house. Now, when Jupiter and Pluto come together, it's the energy, and I, I talk about it like Sonic the Hedgehog, when he would get the uh, the chaos diamond and he would just run and get all of the things, right? Just absolute desire, absolute driven, like you're focused, you're ready to expand. There's wisdom in what you're doing. There's passion, there's movement, right? That's what happens when these two come together. So you're actually able to make your dreams come true with this energy. And it's in your 10th house, which is the house of career and not even just career, your soul level calling. Who are you? What are you known for? How do you identify right now, Aries? Like if you were not in the room and somebody said, oh, my friend da 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 is an Aries and they blah, blah, blah. What are people saying about you? What are you saying about you and how you want to be known? And what are you giving to the world, right? So here... In your desires and your ambitions to give to the world, Jupiter and Pluto are helping you move forward with it. But because they are both retrograde this time, they are working on some ideas and some things from the past. And instead of holding you back, I mean, things are still moving forward, but it is very, very slow with these two. It is showing you like, yes, this has been the plan. This has been the ambition. And yes, you started working on something in April, Aries, right? But here, I'm going to show you the wisdom of how you still need to die off. Let something release so that as these two can join again at the end of the year, you can really leap that thing forward. You can really take that big guzzle of this dream and make it happen. These energies together and retrograde show you that you can defeat your challenges and you can do them efficiently. You can do them effectively. And I think most of the time for as driven and desiresome as humans can be, we forget that we are powerful 
We surrender to win. And that's what I think this energy shows you in this area of your life. So Aries, if you feel like you've still been struggling with career or you're showing up to a career, you're showing up to a job, you're feeling a little bit unfulfilled, or you're just ready to make moves in your career and you haven't quite been able to see how to do that, surrender to win with these two in retrograde and they will help you leap that thing forward and show you how to defeat those challenges. So busy month, lot happening every week. I mean, in the weekly videos that I'll be bringing you, we will really be talking about what's happening on a day-to-day -day basis in the weeklies so that you guys can see how to use these energies because it is just a busy time, but it is a time that we can use to make some moves, to make some decisions, pause where you need to pause. But ultimately, it's an energy this month that I think can be very, very productive for absolutely every single one of us. All right, you guys, I will be continuing to bring you eat and greet collaborations, and I look forward to seeing you join those. We've got beautiful friends coming over. Maurice Fernandez will be here. Elizabeth Grace will be here. I'm getting ready to reach out to Maria De Simone. Annie Botticelli is on the list. Uh, who else? Just so many people are reaching out and want to collaborate, so I look forward to bringing them to you, and I hope that you will join us and check them out. Like this video, comment, share, subscribe. I love you a ton. Happy June, and I will see you next month. Bye.